I've got two badass techniques that are going to inject dynamic and life into your mix. So first of all, I'm gonna to try to explain these techniques to you. I'll take 30 seconds, I'll do a shitty job trying to explain it, and then we'll jump into the DAW and I'll show you exactly what they are and how they work. With these two techniques, we're gonna focus on three areas of our mix. We're gonna focus on the low, the mids, and the high. Let's start with the low. In that low bassy sub area of your mix, when things like the kick drum or the bass guitar hit, we're gonna give them a little help. We're gonna boost them up just a little bit as they hit, and then they're gonna come back down. Simultaneously, we're gonna dip the mids. So the kick drum hits, the bass comes up, and the mid kind of ducks a little bit and comes back. The high end's gonna come up too. So we're gonna have this kind of smiley face EQ curve, and the lows and highs are being accentuated while the mid dips. And then when those two go away, the snare's gonna hit, and it's gonna pump that mid back up. This is something that I've heard for a long time, especially early 2000s, pop rock punk kind of sound, Blink-182, Sum 41. It's punchy, it's energetic. The mix is moving, it's alive, it's dynamic, it's exciting. All right, so let's jump into the DAW. I'm gonna show you what tools I'm using, why I'm using them. We're gonna talk about settings. You're gonna learn some shit, it's gonna be cool. Grab a glass of water, stay hydrated, and let's jump into Cubase. First things first, let's have a quick listen to the song so you can hear what's going on. We're gonna jump into Pro Q3 now and I'm gonna show you how I set this up. We're gonna start with the low band. We're going to create a low shelf to start. I'm gonna leave this right at zero dB and this is going to be affecting just the mid. You can affect mid, side, stereo, left, right. We're just gonna affect the mid channel where all that sub bass is. I don't wanna be bringing out any subs from the sides and honestly in any of the work I do, there are no subs in the sides, that's weird. Anyways. Um, we're also going to make this band dynamic, meaning whatever Pro Q3 hears in this region, uh, once it hits a certain threshold, it's going to adjust that however we like. And we can duck it or bring it up, which is what we're going to be doing. We're going to change this setting down here from zero latency to linear phase. I don't want any weird things happening with our phase. I don't want these adjustments to be ruining the phase relationships of this mix. We also got this setting here, low, medium, high, very high maximum. We're going to put this on high and you can kind of play around with this and see what's working well for you. Basically, the higher you get, the higher resolution the low end has. Uh, but at the same time, it can add latency and pre-ring and funky pre-delays that you probably don't want. So I find high is a pretty good spot for what we're doing here. Um, so let's listen to what this is doing and I'll move it around. And you can kind of hear what's going on. You can see my kick hitting right around here. And if I were to put this right on that frequency, we're gonna be hyping that frequency that already is so dominant in this mix. And then later on, my limiter is gonna have a tough time with that frequency. It's going to be crushing it. And the rest of the mix is going to suffer because of it. And our track's gonna be quiet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna to try to hype those lower sub frequencies and bring them up a little bit. And let's crank it up so you can really hear what's going on. hear how much punch that's adding in that low end. We'll start with it off and I'll turn it on. Quite a bit. Now we are using this in a mastering application so we're just looking to make a few gentle adjustments. We're not trying to rip this mix apart so just baby steps here. So now we can move this band around and we can listen and make some magic happen. Cool, that's got a lot of thumps to it. Sounding pretty good to me. We're going to move on. So on the high end, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm going to insert a band. We're gonna start with the high shelf. I'm gonna leave it at zero. We're going to make this dynamic. So unlike that first band that we set, which is affecting the mid channel with all those low frequencies, this high is going to be set to stereo placement on the sides. 
So whatever's happening here is affecting the high frequency just on the sides. So when our hats and our crashes and sizzly things hit, the sides are going to come up. This is going to expand our stereo field or bring certain elements out of it. Um, high frequency elements to be specific. So right now it looks like it's ducking. We're going to raise that up just like the first band and we're going to move this around and we're going to listen and see what's happening. Somewhere around there sounded pretty cool. We are going to take this out and then we're going to put it in and just listen to the flat mix without Pro Q3 enabled and then listen to what it does when we enable it. A dB here and there is going to go a long way. And there's something I should point out about mid side processing. It is really cool if you're using it sparingly and you know what you're doing with it. However, a big misconception here is that you can just go a little bit crazy and pump those sides up and leave the middle alone. But the middle and the side are connected. Stereo, what we listen to most of the time, left and right. There are not three channels, there are two channels. What mid-side processing does is it tries to affect solely the sides, solely the mid. However, they are very much connected. There's a handful of problems that can result from boosting the shit out of the sides and just leaving the middle alone. These two are very much connected and you need to understand and respect their relationship. This is a whole separate video. When you're processing mid and side separately, just gentle moves, just nudge things into place. All right, that's it for Pro Q3. Let's jump over to Pro MB, the multi-band compressor. The first thing we're gonna do in Pro MB is find the band that we want to affect. And we're gonna be using the mid-range here. So I'm gonna start right around here. And in this expert mode, I can click audition to hear just this band so I can find the frequencies I want to affect. We've got phase options down here at the bottom and I find that dynamic phase sounds really good. This is uh, something specific to Pro MB and it just sounds fantastic. So let's leave that on and let's search for the frequencies that we're going to adjust. I don't wanna to have too much of that low frequency in this band because this is stuff that's going to dip down when the kick hits, right? So I don't wanna lose all of that low end energy. That's really important. Um, and same for the highs. I can't take away too much of the highs. So let's just open it up a bit and see what's going on up there. So there's some spring from the snare. I hear the high end of the bass guitar. I really want that bass to stay intact so that when the kick hits and the bass hits with it, we get a big full sound. All right, cool. So we're going to start with that frequency. And how do we make the kick drum set this off? Well, this is a cool feature in Pro MB. And we switch this here to free. And then that opens up this little guy at the bottom. And now whatever is within these two parameters here, this is the frequency that's going to set off this kind of side chain and make this band duck. So let's just try to find the kick. And again, we can audition this. We've got free selected, we've got audition on, and we can hear just what's happening here. So let's find that kick. All right, so I've got just that low thump of the kick, which is now setting this off. If I go up too high here, I'm gonna start hearing the low end of the snare, and the snare is going to be setting off the mid, and we don't want that. We don't want the snare to be ripping its mid frequencies apart every time it hits. There's the bottom of the snare. You can see it moving with it now, we don't want that. Cool, whenever the kick hits, it's going off. So we'll take it out of audition and listen to what's going on. Now I'm using this multi-band compressor at the mastering stage, so I don't wanna to do too much to the mix. We're just gonna use uh, a low ratio, two to one 
is probably going to work. You can play with this. Uh, I wouldn't go much higher than, I'm not even going to throw out a number. You know what? Just experiment with it and see what's working for you. So let's start with a really fast attack and a pretty fast release. And now what we're going to do is adjust the threshold and the range to determine how much the kick drum is ducking this mid frequency. You can hear when the range is right low and it's really affecting it that the mix just falls apart. So we have to make very subtle movements at this point. Let's turn it off for a sec. It just sounds flat when it's off. So let's start with it off again and I'll kick it in and it's only doing what it's at negative 2.2 and it's not even going that far. We're maybe doing uh, a dB and a half of reduction in this mid band. So we'll start with it off and I'll turn it on and you can hear what's going on. There's just more movement, it's more exciting, it's more dynamic. Let's listen to everything all together now with the Pro Q3 and Pro MB enabled. Let's listen for a few seconds and then I'll turn it off and you can hear how boring the mix gets. So much punch coming from the low end here. The stereo field's opening up there. The Pro MB's ducking that mid band and everything is just moving now. This is really more of a mastering tip, something you'd use at the end of the process, but you can use it in other places. However, I strongly urge you to try and create these dynamics within your mix. Uh, these two techniques are just something you can use at the end to kind of just elevate it, just that extra little bit, but you should really get most of your energy during the mix, during the recording, during the arranging, all the other processes. This is kind of like a last resort, I guess, but you should try it out anyways. Real quick plug, if you guys like this video, hit the like button. If you wanna see more like this, subscribe, hit the dinghy bell, get notified. And let me know if you've tried these techniques before on your master bus or anywhere else in your mix. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you're gonna to try to inject more energy and dynamic into your mixes. Let me know if you found this helpful. If you did, hit that like button. Drop me a comment if you maybe didn't understand everything that I was saying. I know I ramble a lot. I'm happy to elaborate on anything that I've said today. And I really appreciate you guys watching this video. So thank you very much. Have a lovely day.